And joining us now is David Wolf. He's the managing director of the Global China Practice at Allison and Partners. David, thank you for joining us. Good to have you on the show. Good evening, Michelle. How are you? So, David, 83% of consumers outside of China couldn't name a single Chinese brand. That's according to a study by Millwood Brown and WPP. Now, the study was done over a year ago. Do you think this is still the case? I do, but I do believe also that we're seeing some progress. You know, if you look at what that 83% represents, flip it around. The 17% means that, 17, that almost one out of five people can recognize a Chinese brand. That's a big step up from what it was 10 years ago. And we're going to see another big step up, I'm sure, this year. But it'll take place over time. It's not going to change overnight. Well, David, there is a, a change, as you say. But what do you think are the biggest challenges that Chinese brands are facing in expanding internationally? There's several challenges that they face. I would say that the three biggest challenges is, number one, recognition that people don't necessarily recognize these brands and they're not making a great deal of effort to be recognized quite yet. The second is China's reputation itself, that China doesn't quite have a reputation for, for quality that's going to have people thinking, wow, I've got to go out there and buy the next Chinese brand. But I would also say that, that the third thing that's, that's been a problem is, while we see a lot of products in the market from China, many of them are coming in as either no-label brands or they're coming in as private label brands, that they're sneaking in under someone else's brand to get into America. Right. So Chinese, that, so Chinese brands have never really given themselves the opportunity to, to bloom and to grow in, uh, in Europe, in well, the United States, or you in any markets. A good point. You raise a good point in that a lot of the time China does the manufacturing, but on behalf of another multinational company's brand or label. So what do these Chinese companies need to do to successfully change this, to correct this perception of quality? Well, the first thing that they have to do is they have to recognize that in order to make that transition, they have to know the local culture that they're going into, and they should be going into cultures that are as similar as possible to their own and going into markets as similar as possible to their own because there the expectations of quality are closer to what they have at home and they can start building their reputation there. The second thing they have to do is they have to get to know their markets and what their markets expect from them. If you don't know what's expected of you, how can you possibly match the quality that, that the market wants? And so they have to invest in research and they have to take the chance, time to learn before they actually move into these markets. So David, a lot of market research and you mentioned going and established in, in similar markets and we do see that Chinese brands have more recognition in emerging markets, according to that WPP study, 6% of consumers in the U.S. can name a Chinese brand, 14% in the U.K., but 29% of people in Brazil. So what do you explain the reason behind the disparity between the familiarity in, in the regions? I think a lot of the more intelligent Chinese companies have realized that for them, the soft underbelly of globalization is other emerging economies. China is one of the BRICs. Go to the other BRICs. Go to Brazil, to Russia, to India, to Indonesia, to South Africa. Those are markets with very similar market conditions to China. And therefore, the products and the, the, the way that you have to market these products is easily much more similar than it would be going into the developed world or even underdeveloped world uh, countries like in, in Africa. So it's a natural transition for them. And that's why they're seeing so much success there. David, let's talk about the more successful ones, and the Chinese business landscape is changing. We can see this by the fact that uh, the recent Chinese brand study by Millwood and Brown has uh, three out of China's top five brands, which are market-driven companies, not state-owned. Tencent, number one, Alibaba, number two, China Mobile is number three. Now, five years ago, the top Chinese brands were all state-owned. So what does this tell us? What this tells us is that the state-owned brands are not quite as nimble as the, the, the non-state-owned brands are. That the non-state-owned brands, very much driven by the need to succeed or die in foreign markets without any government safety net, without any help from, from the Chinese government, they must go in and win. And so they will do whatever it takes. And as part of doing whatever it takes, they start to learn the local markets. I won't say there's arrogance on the part of the state-owned enterprises, but there is a great deal of detachment 
this belief that if we build it and it's cheap, it will sell. The smart companies understand you can't operate that way in the rest of the world. David, you've compiled a list of some of the worst Chinese brands. What are they and what are these companies doing so wrong? Well, when I say the worst, these are five companies. Qingdao Beer, Haiar, uh, which is a white goods manufacturer, ZTE, even Huawei, and Air China. These are fantastically run companies. In many cases, very innovative companies. But the problem is their brands aren't growing. If anything, their brands are a bit under siege in some of the most important markets in the world. And the simple reason is they're still learning how to sell themselves in these markets. They're still learning how to get credit for all the great stuff that they do. And Huawei, I would say, is probably the closest to come off that list. But all it would take for any of these is just the right amount of effort in the right place, and they could find themselves on the plus side of the ledger. OK, thank you for your perspective and insight. David Wolf, Managing Director of the Global China Practice at Allison & Partners.